Hello, I'm Guy Evans and welcome to my home museum. Today's object is a beaded necklace that I made myself many, many years ago when I was a young Sydney cider. I threaded these beads myself. Um, I was sitting on a secluded perch among ancient wave sculpted rocks high above a wild sea and and when i wear these these pretty pierced stones and shells and glass beads i'm i'm reminded of of the person that 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 apprentice adult that i was then i can still feel the smooth curve of sandstone under my bare feet and and hear the insistent strangled scry strangled screams of the local birds and and the roar and wash of the ocean and I remember the times that I wore it, the house parties, the gigs and, and the music and the people that I loved at this time of intense colour and conversation. My necklace then is full of meaning for me. And that's the evolutionary purpose of jewellery, of decoration, of making and sourcing and wearing beautiful things that don't feed us or protect us, but are nevertheless desirable. Beauty for us has meaning and therefore value. And beadwork's a part of a decorative technology that conveys information through a visual language shared by the wearer and their group, and, and even wider, it can be understood more widely. Symbolic culture, it relies on collective belief. So in my culture, it's understood and accepted that my necklaces are just worn for adornment. But they would be interpreted very differently if they were worn in different cultures. What kinds of cultural meaning can be held and conveyed in a symbolic object like this? Messages about identity, tribal loyalty, wealth, much, much more. So shell beads have been used in this way for over a hundred thousand years. In fact, coloured shell beads worn by Neanderthals have been found in Spain, um, dating back 115,000 years. The oldest necklace that we found for our species was discovered in the Blombus Cave on the southern tip of South Africa. And that's made up of um, more than 65 small teardrop shaped uh, tick shells and they have um, intentional perforations and traces of ochre decoration still clinging to them. And that necklace reveals the common humanity that we share with their last owner some 75,000 years ago. The Blombus beads wouldn't look out of place hanging with my other necklaces. Whoever made that jewellery designed it with an eye for symmetry and beauty, carefully selecting each bead. And this meaningful intention was recognised by the wearer and those who saw it. The value of objects like beaded necklaces meant that they were collectible and tradable. So even though you can't eat a necklace, it still has value. You can use it as collateral to oil the wheels of trade. So if you consider that if you're a spear maker and you want to eat, you can barter your weapon with a hunter for meat. But what if there's no bison in the area, but you still want to eat? There's just tubers. A potato harvester um, has no need of your spear. So barter relies on the coincidence of supply and demand and it only really works in small trusting societies. Once trade networks become bigger and accounting becomes just too complicated to remember and, and too risky, valuable objects like beaded necklaces can be used as a payment to lower this risk. They were, I suppose, the first form of money now the same perforated shell beads that were found at Blombus have also been found at other sites from Algeria in North Africa all the way down to the Southern Cape and across to Israel, dating back 120,000 years. And this suggests it was a cultural practice shared across tribes over many, many thousands of years. Several of the locations where these marine shells have been found are so far inland that they must have been brought there and this reveals active continent-wide trade networks between coastal and inland peoples. The shell beads probably helped create and maintain these networks. And these ancient organised networks would also have enhanced um, genetic, cultural, resource exchange. And, and that meant that they would have accelerated our cultural evolution. 
because just as we've evolved to, re to rely on um, our tribe for our survival, so the survival of our tribe is reliant on other tribes. So trade networks were vital for our African ancestors, just as they are for us today. And underpinning it all is our eternal love for meaningful beauty.